Welcome to this video. My name is Ingo Miersler and I'm the founder of RapidMiner. In the next 30 minutes we will demonstrate how analysts can quickly build models using advanced analytics methods with our visual composition framework called RapidMiner Studio. You will then see how those models can be validated, deployed and even turned into prescriptive actions. This demonstration consists of two parts. In the first part we will um, use machine learning to predict the survival for the Titanic accident and in the second part we will cover the analysis of the fatality analysis reporting systems data from the US government. Okay, let's start with the first part of the demonstration, um, the prediction of the survival for the Titanic accident. Everybody who knows the movie knows that it was um, more likely to survive the accident if you booked a higher passenger class. In this case, we will confirm this here um, and we will show how to use our visual process design how to perform all the necessary data preparation. We will cover one of the most innovative parts of RapidMiner, which is the wisdom of crowds, showing you the right preparation and the right modeling based on all the wisdom of our huge user base. And we will also cover how to validate a model and see that RapidMiner is the only platform being able to create honest validations covering both the modeling itself and the pre-processing of data. Okay, let's get started with the first demonstration. So this is the welcome screen of RapidMiner and usually you could start with a tutorial or some of our use case accelerators but I would like to build a new process from scratch so let's just click here. Which brings you to the design perspective. That is the place where you design all those processes typically from um, adding some operators um, here from the left or some data sets from one of our repositories. Um, which can be a database connection, some local files, or some cloud-based data sources. Okay, so um, before I really start building the process, I would like to point out one interesting thing, which is really one of the most innovative features of RapidMiner, and that is the wisdom of the crowds concept. Wisdom of the crowds is an idea where we learn from all the experience of our huge user base of 250,000 users. So we collect how they are solving data prep and machine learning problems and then we take this knowledge for making recommendations to you as a user how to well solve your data prep and machine learning problem so now we currently have an empty process here so what should be the first recommendation well let's get some data in and in fact over here this is the recommended operators from the wisdom of crowds and indeed retrieve which is for importing some data is the most frequently um, suggested operation here so let's just do that. If I now would just execute this process I will get an error message because I didn't really import data I just added the operation for importing data I still need to define what data set should be imported so let's go into our repository here and let's pick the Titanic data and now I can connect this operator here to the results ports on the right whatever is delivered from here to there is shown to the user um, so the user can inspect the results, but is also used by other applications in case you would like to deploy this process on our server product, uh, turn this into a web service and integrate this process into other applications. Okay, so that's for the most simple process um, you can build. Um, let's execute this. And this is the data. So we have a couple of columns. The most important one is the survival column, indicating if somebody survived the tragedy or not. We have the passenger class, the name, sex, the size of the family, age, and other data available. Um, which brings us to probably one of the most important phases at the beginning of, of a new analysis, which is about a data exploration. And this statistics view is really helpful for that. So here you get an overview about all the data you have. Um, so you see this is the column we would like to predict. You can click on this and see some distribution, so more people actually uh, died at this uh, accident than then survived. You see the um, passenger class, so most people have been actually traveling in third class, not really surprising. But also you can point out a couple of um, uh, problems, like for example here, missing values. The age column has 263 missing values. We should probably do something about this. Kevin has even more missing values, and in fact, 1,000 values or more than 1,000 are missing out of the 1,300 values in total. And the cabin probably doesn't cover really a lot of information anyway, so probably we should just remove this column altogether. Lifeboat is another one we would like to remove simply because it's 
has a too high correlation with the survival. Um, if you made it on a lifeboat, well, you're very likely to survive. But the big question is, who made it there? Had, for example, the passenger class an influence on that? So that's exactly what we want to figure out. So let's get rid of this. The ticket number, which is really sort of an ID, we should remove as well, and we should do something about the name. Okay, so it's in, we, we inspected the data, and we figured out what we need to do. So now let's just do it. Um, back to the process. The first thing Wisdom of Crowds now recommending is, is recommending is uh, the selection of attributes. And that's exactly what we need to do now. So go, let's go with a subset of the data. In fact, let's start with all of this. But let's get rid of the cabin because there are too many missing. The lifeboat because of the too high correlation with the, um, with the uh, label. And the ticket number because it's sort of an ID. Okay, that's the first step. As the next step, um, let's set the name to an ID column. So let's move the set role operator here, which again has been immediately uh, recommended by Wisdom of Crowds. So let's go with the name and turn this into an ID. Now there was the H column. Uh, the H column with a lot of missing values and we would like to handle them. Well, we could filter them out now, but actually for missing values, there's um, there are a couple of other alternatives. You could, for example, use machine learning and learn a model which is predicting what the most likely value is. Um, or we could just replace the missing value for the H column, um, for example, by the average of the column, which is in this case good enough. Okay, but last but not least, we also have a couple of other rows with missing values, only a few. So in this case, I think it's fair if you could just use the filter, which is recommended again, and just remove all those rows which still have some missing columns or missing values left. So pay attention that really the whole data pre-processing was really a result of the, of the recommendation of wisdom of crowds. So if I execute this process now, um, you see the final data and actually looks very good now. So we have all the columns left we want, the name is an ID column, and all the rest is good, no missing values left, and we handle them in the right way. So this was all recommended by Wisdom of Crowds, and that also shows the power. It's not just helpful for new users to figure out what to do. It's also extremely helpful for experienced users because you're so fast by just picking the recommendations from here instead of searching through those hundreds and thousands of, and of operators um, over here. Okay, now we could, would be ready for modeling, but before we actually do this, just I would just like to point out a couple of other things. The first thing is, um, now I have a couple of pre-processing steps, maybe I can group them in a nice way to, well, improve the readability of our process. And of course, you can just move them into a sub-process. Give this a nice name, data prep, and also maybe add a small, a small note here. This is the data prep for the Titanic um, data. Okay, so now we have put this in here and we can go inside here and make changes if we want or out again. Um, but this already helps to get better organized. But one of the nice features of RapidMiner is also that we can just right click on such a new operation basically consisting of others um, and save them as a building block. So data prep for Titanic, for example. And that's some description. Okay, let's get this now. And now I can save this building block. And now whenever I want to, I can also add this data preparation in other processes or in the same process again, like here. And I can also share those building blocks with other analysts in my organization to make us all much more efficient and sometimes even standardized. So now before we do the final modeling step, last thing I would like to point out, what happens if there is really something missing uh, in RapidMiner? Well, there's the RapidMiner marketplace where you can add more functions here to the RapidMiner platform, more, many of them developed by RapidMiner itself, but also many which have been developed by our community users or partners. Um, but there might also be the case that you would like to add some functionality you have created, let's say, by using R or Python, like a specialized data prep um, operation or a specialized machine learning algorithm. And you can always do this by just adding, uh, let's say, an execute Python script here and add your own scripts as part of the overall workflow. Okay, but now finally, let's start with the modeling. Um, there's in total, more than 250 different modeling schemes supported by RapidMiner. Um, that's really a lot. And of course, all the standard 
models like decision trees are in here. And all you need to do now is just drag them over from here to there. And now you see that the data is used and a model is created. And let's just execute this in inspect. So here's the result. This is actually quite interesting because, well, if you want to predict the, the survival of the Titanic accident, the most important column actually is, well, yeah, well, is, if, is the question of the sex, if you're male or female. And if you're male, it really only depends on the passenger fare. And if you paid more, typically you're in a higher class, then there was a higher likelihood to survive. But for the females, actually something else was more important. And that was the family size. If the females had a lot of family members, large families on board, unfortunately, there's a lower likelihood to survive. And only for small families, then the passenger class became more important. I found this really um, surprising, and that's exactly what predictive analytics is about. Not just figuring out those models um, and, and all those thresholds like here, but also finding those surprising insights, um, teaching you what really is going on in your data. Okay, so let's just um, check a couple of other um, modeling schemes. For example, I can add in a linear regression. And now something interesting happens here. Uh, RapidMiner is complaining and tells us, well, it can't really work on this kind of data. But that's again where Wisdom of Crowds can help. So by just right-clicking here and selecting one of the quick fixes which is suggested, RapidBiner will automatically correct the process and make it work. And those quick fixes are also based on what most other users are doing in a situation like this to fix the problem. So they just pick one. In this case, there is only one. And uh, RapidMiner automatically adds the necessary data transformation to the process here. And then you see, well, I can run the linear regression and you get all the typical insights uh, and the regression model. Okay, so last thing I would like to show, or two things, actually more things. One is uh, ensemble mo um, models, like for example, a random forest. All you need to do is drag this in again. And then you see that we get actually all the detailed models here, and you can inspect all the models. In this case, I only trained 10. And then really the last thing is uh, the validation of models. So I could now build a complete uh, validation scheme here, or I can use one of those building blocks, for example, a nominal cross-validation, and just add this nominal cross-validation to the process, deliver the model, and also the average, um, how well the model works. And one of the interesting things of the RapidMiner cross-validation is that it's very modular again, so you can go inside here. Here's the model, a decision tree. I can, of course, change this but I also can add all kinds of pre-processing before the model. So for example, normalization or a feature selection. And the result of the normalization can then be delivered into the testing process here. And that is extremely important because otherwise you would leak, if you, for example, do the feature selection or normalization before the cross-validation, you would leak information about the testing data into the training process. And that leads to um, overfitting or actually more specifically to a wrong estimation of the prediction accuracy um, and RapidMiner really is the only platform out here which can cover all kinds of models and pre-processing models to come up with an honest and correct estimation. And here's how it looks like. So the model is able to predict correctly 80% of the cases and you get all kinds of visual representation like RC curves and others of course as well. Okay, so that is the first part of the demonstration around the Titanic data, um, showing you really how to import data, how wisdom, how powerful wisdom of crowds really is to build those processes, how you can define reusable building blocks. Um, and last but not least, we also covered this honest cross-validation approach of RapidMiner.